Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Friday, June 1st, Market Watchers Live show with your hosts, Tom Boley and Aaron Swinlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show, and for our regulars, welcome back. Well, uh, we had the non-farm payrolls report out for May this morning, market reacting very positive to that to those numbers. Uh, we did beat expectations. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average currently down, or excuse me, currently up 205 points. The S&P 500 up 27 uh, and challenging recent highs, as you can see here on the chart. Uh, the NASDAQ is up uh, in breakout territory, up more than 100 points above the 7,500 level. We haven't seen that in a while. And the Russell 2000 threatening another breakout to an all-time high, up 12 points today. 10-year Treasury yield bouncing, highest level it's seen this week on the heels of that solid um, jobs report. Volatility index uh, really going away. I, I was kind of surprised yesterday we had a very small spike in the VIX despite some selling again in the market. And that's a signal that the market is willing to accept some poor headline news. And uh, right now, VIX down 12.38% today, back in that 13 and a half area. Technology leading the rally, that's always a good sign for the bulls. Breaking out of this flagpole with flag action here next to it. Beautiful breakout on the technology area today. Financials like the 10 year treasury yield trading at its highest level of the week, that's good news. Utilities, after a really steady march higher as the 10-year Treasury yield has been struggling, now with the yield moving back higher, everyone bailing out of utilities down 1.78%. Last check, this was the only sector that was in negative territory. Internet stocks leading that technology group. Big breakout here today on internet stocks. Railroads continue to be strong, up another 48 points today, over 2%. And IDEX Labs, uh, one of the better performers in the NASDAQ 100 today. I think this chart looks uh, really nice. Big move higher, gap up uh, and rally in early May. We went all the way back down, filled the gap, and now we are on uh, the verge of a breakout here on IDEX Labs. Okay, well, Aaron, it is Friday morning. Uh, been a kind of a crazy week, up and down action. You know, we had a big sell-off Tuesday, big rally Wednesday, big sell-off yesterday. Get good jobs numbers today, back up. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm exhausted. I know. Well, if you recall, last week I said mostly unchanged, mainly because that's what I was expecting. You know, a bunch of, you know, days with the, you know, the volatility, let's face it, has been pretty crazy. And so one up, one down, one up, one down. So I figured it, it finished mostly unchanged this week. And uh, I might be wrong, though. It looks like we might end up about uh, up about a half a percent this week. Well, hard to tell where we're going to be by the close because we still have four more hours and the way this week's been going. Exactly. Hard to tell where we'll be in four hours, but I do like a lot of what's been going on in the market. And when I get into some of the technical news, I'm going to pull up a number of industry charts um, and show uh, many of them are bullish. I know a lot of folks talk about the FANG stocks and how this uh, rally is, is very narrow. I would argue that is not the case. I see a lot of strength in the market building, but we'll get into all that in a few minutes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and and do take the poll because I, I like to turn in what you all think as far as what the market will do next week. That poll is available to you if you're watching this on the Stock Charts TV tab. It is just to the right. So go ahead and take that poll. Do you think the market, uh, the S&P is going to close higher, lower, or mostly unchanged next week? Um, is that a question for me or the audience? <laughs> well, it'll be a question for you at the end of the program, <laughs> but let me go over the, the weekly schedule and, and then we can get into this. So lots to talk about for sure. Okay. Tuesday, I do have a workshop planned. I have a couple of subjects uh, that I'm thinking about. Uh, I'll put those up, I think, on Monday for the survey. Charlie Kirkpatrick is going to be here. Bruce Frazier is here on Thursday. Uh, Charlie will be here Wednesday. And on Friday, we have everything stock charts and rumor has it we will have Chip Anderson in uh, to do that segment on next Friday. But for today, I'm going to be doing a decision point monthly chart review. All of the monthly charts went final last night. So I'm going to go over those with you. 10 and 10, our first symbol is going to be microvision, M V I S. And at the final, we're going to do chart breakouts. Tom's going to show you what charts he's looking at and what uh, stock symbols are breaking out or getting ready to. And with that, Tom, I'm going to pass it to you. You were saying we did have some non-farm uh, payroll reports out. Oh, yeah. It was a big morning uh, from an economic perspective. A number of reports out. 
The biggie, of course, was non-farm payrolls. You can see here the 10-year Treasury yield, which had dropped down to about 2.76% earlier this week back on Tuesday. And that followed a pretty steady decline over about six or seven trading days. But we have started to move back to the upside. And uh, today, the 10-year Treasury yield is at 2.895%, almost 290. It was actually above that at 292 earlier this morning. Uh, filling this little this gap here, but so far the continuing uptrend, higher highs and higher lows remains intact. And so one thing to watch is whether or not the 10-year Treasury yield can move back up above this 20-day moving average, because if it does, I think that is a signal for a resumption in the trend uh, higher for, a ten, for a Treasury yields. And that can be very bullish for a couple of areas of the market, particularly financials, and I would say also the industries, industrials as well. So really good action here in the 10-year Treasury yield. Uh, the news out today, May non-farm payrolls, 223,000. Market was only expecting 190,000, so a nice beat there. May private payrolls, 218,000 versus 184,000. The unemployment rate dropped unexpectedly to 3.8%. Wall Street was looking for 3.9%. May average hourly earnings rose three-tenths of 1%. The market expecting two-tenths of 1%. Then May PMI manufacturing came out at 945 Eastern just after the market opened. A little weaker than expected, 56.4 versus 56.6. But 15 minutes later at 10 a.m., May ISM manufacturing came in 58.7, slightly above 58.5 expectation. And then finally, also at 10 a.m., April construction spending rose 1.8 percent, market only looking for 0.8 percent. And what I find most interesting about this, once again, you know, yesterday, I think there was a negative report. I think it was pending home sales and home construction actually did pretty well. Today, we get great news in construction spending and home construction is the weakest industry group in the consumer discretionary sector. So it just shows you. Uh, in the short term, fundamentals and technicals do not align over longer periods of time. I'd say, yes, there's much more of a positive correlation, but you drive yourself crazy in the short term, sometimes looking at the news and then trying to see what's going on in the charts. Follow the charts. Anyhow, 10-year uh, Treasury yield, uh, you can see, did move up on all that economic news. I found interesting the May average hourly earnings rising uh, because a little bit of inflation is a good thing. And a little bit of inflation causes interest rates to go up, as do, do um, economic reports that are better than expectations. Uh, and that's exactly what we had with the non-farm payrolls. So really, a couple of reasons for the Treasury yields to rise. And so far today, you can see up seven basis points. So not a shocker there. I do want to mention that the uh, German DAX uh, bounce or was bouncing earlier today. Uh, this was a pretty important 12,600 level that we had cleared in uh, Germany back in the early part of May. We went all the way back down, traded intraday yesterday below 12.6, finished at 12.604, and then we got the nice rebound today in Germany. I think that was uh, really timely that we got the bounce there. We could also look at the uh, uh, crude oil prices, and you can see crude oil prices, I've been mentioning $66 as a key support level. That was resistance back in January and March. We had a triple top at that level went through and so far we've been holding $66 a barrel. I know earlier today we were in that 66 and a half area. I'm not sure exactly where we are now, but I'd watch 66 because that's a level we'd want to hold on to. If we fail to hold it, then I think some of the recent weakness in energy could continue, especially on a relative basis as the market tries to go higher. Uh, I wanted to pull up a couple of charts that I had in my blog this morning because I, I've talked a lot about the theme of 2018, which is money rotating towards small caps. And so in the current outlook uh, part of my blog today, I was talking about the rapidly rising dollar, but we did hit uh, a major, I would say short, maybe even intermediate term uh, uh, price resistance level on the dollar index at 95. And we've been backing off of it. Uh, you can see we closed yesterday at 93.96 after hitting that 95 level. So there's a couple of things maybe to consider here. Will the dollar pull back, maybe put in a reverse right shoulder? Um, because off of this downtrend, this looks like it certainly could develop into some sort of a bottoming pattern before we make a bigger breakout to the upside. Um, but the maybe a different way to look at it is that big picture chart that I like to show on here from time to time. And you can see that the U.S. Treasury yield 
continues to climb rapidly versus the German 10-year Treasury yield. And what we tend to see is the dollar following this to the upside. These pink arrows here, look at the pink directional line right here showing that the rates have broken out in the U.S. relative to Germany. Well, that normally results in the dollar breaking out, but the dollar is still way down on a relative basis. Um, and what we've seen in the past is the dollar play significant catch up after we go through one of these periods of inverse correlation where we see U.S. Treasury rates uh, moving up quicker than Germany, but the dollar falling. When we've seen that in the past, we've had these huge moves up in the dollar. So there's two ways to look at this. One, I think in the short term, just looking at the chart, maybe we're going to get this pullback. But I think the more important uh, trend to follow is the fact that U.S. Treasury yields continue to rise versus Germany, and that could send the dollar rising very quickly. So if you're overweighting the Russell 2000, but maybe changed your position when we hit the neckline resistance, I don't think that's a bad thing. But if we see the dollar index break back up above 95, I think that the small cap outperformance is likely to continue in the foreseeable future. So something to think about. Uh, I've got a lot of charts that I want to go over um, looking at the industries. So let me take a look at a few, actually a number of them. I'm going to go try to go through these really fast. The internet stocks. If you look at the internet, big breakout over the most recent high. We pulled back. We hit that rising 20 day, which is exactly what we expect, what we want to see. And now we're breaking back out above it. Look at the key resistance up above 1760, because that's the next stop for the internet group. The software group. We talked about this one yesterday. This group likes June. June is a favorable month. And we're certainly opening the month of June very strongly on software up one and a half percent, breaking out to an all time high. I think software looks very strong. The semiconductors. These are really this is the three amigos uh, of the technology area. As far as I'm concerned, I like watching the Internet, software and semiconductor stocks. Semiconductors making a push towards breakout. So we've got a breakout in software, Internet and semiconductors, both strengthening and approaching key breakout levels. Keep an eye on these groups. Moving over into the healthcare area, we've got uh, medical equipment, one of the best performers today. Look at this, trying to make a very significant breakout above 1520 to 1525. We are at 1528 right now. Beautiful move higher in the medical equipment index. The paper group, uh, actually, yeah, let's do the papers, paper next. Uh, and I'm gonna jump around a little bit here. I'll try to keep it uh, together with uh, sectors. But here you've got paper stocks doing very well. Look at this uh, quadruple top coming across here at about 175. We made the breakout um, earlier this week and we're pulling back the last couple of days. But I think if we, as we get closer to 175, the uh, paper index could be very uh, solid reward to risk area for, for entry. A couple not doing so well, and this is in the material space, by the way, with paper and now with miners. Uh, this is a group that it was trying to stave off a break of support. You can see uh, the tops coming across here at about 89. Notice we pulled back. We held 89. Today's low, 88.96, and we're bouncing off of it. So far, so good for the miners. Same holds true for the uh, gold miners, the DJ US uh, PM uh, gold mining index. Look at this. Looked like we were breaking down intraday below the recent lows but so far holding on to it. Not a, these are not my favorite areas, but at least for now, they are holding on to support. I'd be careful if they fail to hold it. Uh, moving on to energy, let's take a look at the exploration and production stocks. Beautiful move to the upside. We did move a little bit below the 20 day, but we had consolidated around 790 or so. Notice we pulled back into that 790 area and are starting to move back higher again. I think this is good. Perhaps one of the best areas in the energy group currently is the uh, pipeline index where we have seen a breakout above pretty important. This was a reaction high back in February. This is a pretty important resistance level at about the 650 area. And we saw volume pick up back on uh, Wednesday on the move higher and breaking out above these highs. And we are continuing to put new highs in. So I think the uh, pipelines look pretty good. Sticking with energy for a second, the DJ USOI. This uh, has excellent support in the 435 to 440 area. Look at all these tails coming in here holding, made a breakout. And as we come back down, 
the support in this area is what I would be watching to hold. A close much below 435, certainly 430, uh, would not be a, a good short-term development for this group. I expect that we will see it hold, though. Railroads. Uh, doesn't get a whole lot better than railroads. This is a group that broke out earlier in May, continuing to move higher. Railroads, when you think about it, really it's a proxy for the U.S. economy, um, or certainly the economy in North America. I don't know too many railroads shipping into Europe and Asia. So uh, railroads, anytime the railroads are doing well, that's normally a sign that a lot of goods being shipped here in North America. This is a pretty good sign of uh, anticipated economic strength as we look forward in the U.S. Next up, um, and by the way, railroads are in the industrial group. Uh, so now we'll take a look at a few um, industry groups here. This is a, a, the commercial vehicles and trucks index. And I am looking at 2125 as a really key area because we've been in this downtrend. This looks to me like a left inverse shoulder, uh, left side of the neckline head, right side of the neckline, which is rising. And so far, a right shoulder that is above the left shoulder. So it's beginning to slope up. I think it looks pretty good. If we get a breakout above 2125, I would view this very bullish for the commercial vehicles and trucks index. The uh, DJUSTS, which is transportation services, sticking with the industrials for now. Clearly, we've had some reaction highs up around 290. That's what we want to hold. Short term, really, we've been in this range, pretty tight range for the last few weeks between 280 and 290. Watch for a breakout above 290. That would be a bullish development. Truckers, another really bullish area of the uh, industrials and within transportation. See this move up just two days ago. Got up to the 865, 870 area to test the January high. We have pulled back. I love the way that this group bounced after breaking down below key support in early May. Once we broke down, this looks like a spring if you're a Wyckoffian. Um, after sideways consolidating, I think this is maybe a reaccumulation phase, and this could serve as a spring. With they move back up, a close above 870 would confirm that. Aerospace. When we look at the aerospace, um, you know, we did uh, move back down, fill this gap, which we saw heavy volume gap up back on May 21st, went all the way back down, filled the gap, holding this rising 20 day moving average. I would look for aerospace to make another pushback to the 1675 area. That could be good news for Boeing. DJ USPC, this is the waste and disposal services area, uh, showing much more bullish tendencies, I think. Uh, move up put in a, a higher low. We broke out above this double top here, and we've been doing so with a rising PPO. So I think we've got some strength building here. Uh, I think the, the uh, defense stocks look very interesting here because you look at the daily chart and you say, well, this thing is just, you know, big sell off on heavy volume. Initial bounce was pretty good, but we just can't seem to get going. This is where sometimes it's a good idea to take a step back, look at the big picture. We had a negative divergence on defense stocks on a weekly chart. Higher prices, lower PPO. We went back. We got that 50 period test. And now I think we are consolidating above the 50 as the PPO, the weekly PPO moves back down towards centerline support. I think on a weekly basis, this chart looks pretty darn good. Uh, next up, airlines. Okay. There's got to be a fly in the ointment. This certainly is one of them. I don't like the airlines group. Um, Daily chart, we've got a little bit of bounce late last week. It's been a rough week this week, and this is with crude oil prices lower. I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the airlines, but I will say this. If there is one silver lining here, it's at the long-term support area between 240 and 250 on the weekly chart continues to hold. Let's move on to the consumer discretionary area. Uh, just a few more real quick here. Uh, this is the clothing and accessories. Nice move up. Nice little cup. Equal highs. Pull back in a handle. Watch for a breakout here. Footwear. Very strong group. Uh, sideways consolidation. We made the breakout. Continue to push higher. I like footwear. Move on to the apparel retailers. Not, a, not too many areas out there stronger than what we've been seeing in apparel retail the last three or four weeks. Huge move up. Clearing the January high. PPO looks extremely strong. Pull back to the rising 20 week, or excuse me, 20 day moving average would be very bullish here. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, specialty retailers. Another breakout above a triple top here earlier this, well, actually uh, back in uh, May, middle of May. Nice breakout. PPO looks good here. 
the uh, DJ USCS, which is consumer services. You can see double top. We did make a breakout, failed to hold the breakout level, but we held the rising 20 day. Look for a close over 1520. I think that would be very bullish. Uh, group that's not been performing well, broadcasting entertainment, uh, big move down here, but off of this low and recovery back to test resistance, we've gone back down. Maybe we're getting a double bottom, but too early to tell. Um, probably could keep a fairly tight stop, though, if you took a chance on this being a double bottom. Last one, gambling stocks. Um, if you're a gambler, probably not a bad idea maybe to take a shot with the gambling stocks right now. Beautiful move up. PPO started accelerating here back in the second week of May. We pulled back, and we have been holding the rising 20. I really like what's going on today. We had moved down below the 20-day earlier, but we are back up above it, and a breakout above this triple top around 1060 would be extremely bullish. Okay, I'm out of breath, Aaron, so I am going to turn it over <laughs> to you for the DP special DP monthly report. Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much, Tom. All right, so let's get started with our decision point monthly chart review. Uh, these are what I'm. Gonna, this is what I'm going to cover. So we'll, it will be a little bit of a fire hose effect, but I'll try and uh, be brief on the charts and get right to the point. Uh, so we're going to start off. I'm going to look at the large cap indexes. Uh, then I'll go through the mid and small caps. Uh, I use the ETFs when I do that. Then we're going to look at what I call the big four: dollar, gold, oil, and bonds. So I really. Uh, the main point is to get uh, over these uh, monthly charts so that you can see what the trends are in the very long term. So that's what I'm going to cover. And then, of course, uh, the decision point indicators. Uh, I have three charts of those. So let's go ahead and get started with a look at the decision point scoreboard. So here are the four that we cover. And as you can see, we have the first row here are trend model signals. All of these signals are derived from the daily chart five 20-day EMA cross crossovers, 20 50-day EMA crossovers, and then long-term, which is 50 and 200-day EMA crossovers. What we're gonna be paying attention to more, more today are the PMO signals. You get these signals from the daily chart, the weekly PMO on a weekly chart, and then we look at the monthly chart for the monthly PMO, and that's where we get these signals. So that's why at the end of the week, Carl will do his weekly wrap and go over those weekly charts. And then uh, once a month, I write about them, which I did last night. So you're welcome to go check out that blog uh, for a nice summary of what I'm going to be doing today, although I will be covering uh, slightly more than I covered in that blog. So the, the main thing we want to look at here are the, you know, is the fact we have pretty much uh, price trends are working very well. We're all on bullish signals, with the exception of the Dow. And as you can see, that actually came in yesterday, I think it was, yes, yesterday, we got a neutral signal uh, in the short term, and that means that we had a negative 520-day EMA crossover, and that occurred below or above the 50-day EMA, so that is why it is a neutral and not a sell. And the PMO also crossed below its signal in line yesterday. I suspect uh, I will be writing about this, uh, likely in chart watchers. We will probably see these signals whipsaw back into buy signals by the end of the day if we continue on the, the route we're going so far. So let's go ahead. I'm going to share. Uh, let's see. We're going to look at, let's start with the uh, S&P 500. I think that's the best place to start. And here we go. I'm going to look at some of the, the weekly charts and the monthly charts. But in the case of the S&P, I do want to show you the daily chart just to give you my, my thoughts currently. So you can see there was where we had that intermediate term buy signal when that 20 crossed above the 50. We've really been staying in a consolidation zone. You know, it's uh, after getting the, the nice move up, we're consolidating sideways. We still haven't broken out above these recent highs uh, from earlier in May. Uh, so we'll be watching to see if we can get that. But right now, things are starting to look up. You can see that the PMO, which was topping, has now turned itself back up. And that's today so far. And we can see, honestly, the OBV is not what I'd like to see right now. It is trending lower, but I think uh, the fact that we're getting, of course, this nice burst 
today and a likely move to me to all time highs, especially if we can get this PMO to turn up. It would be a really nice setup. The PMO is only at readings of about 0.5. It won't be overbought until we hit that two mark. So there's plenty of space for that momentum to build and build and give us a nice move up, hopefully back to those all time highs. But I'm not looking for that just now, not quite right away. I'm going to make this a little bigger. There we go. All right, so I'm looking at the weekly chart for the S&P right now. And honestly, the, the two things I want you to take away from this chart, and I didn't annotate it, I apologize, but you can see that we really do now have a, a, a symmetrical triangle. We were building on that. And you can see in the thumbnail how the, uh, the moves we got this week popped up above that declining tops trend line which is good news, of course. But I think uh, you can still make a case for the most recent tops to connect those declining tops, collect, uh, connect these rising bottoms, and you're going to get a symmetrical triangle. And, you know, they can break either, either way. We know that. But typically, more often than not, they're continuation patterns. So that suggests in the intermediate term, that we will get that breakout out of that uh, symmetrical triangle and we should start seeing that rally move up to those all time highs or in the case of the S&P at least to that 2800 level I would look for that to be challenged probably in the next uh, couple of weeks if not sooner. The monthly chart for the S&P and what I'm going to note pretty much on, on most of these monthly charts for the large caps anyway, actually the mid caps and the small caps as well, is uh, rising trend channels. Right now, when you look at the long term for the S&P, we actually have a rising wedge. But I mean, this is a wedge formed since 2009. And we've yet to get the breakdown from it. We're holding a shorter term here, rising bottoms trend line. And it, it's not, I, I don't see any problems right now with these. You know, we, we've come down and in fact, this last month, we didn't even go all the way down to test that rising bottoms trend line. So I'm feeling pretty good about what's going on with the S&P. Uh, however, what you will notice with three of our large cap indexes, we're seeing the PMO still in decline on the monthly charts. Yes, they're on buy signals, but we have see, uh, seen them starting to decline. Not a surprise, they started to decline in early 2018 when we had all this volatility and we got the correction. Uh, but you can see now we're starting to decelerate. That PMO wants to turn up. Let's go ahead and we're gonna look at the NASDAQ. Actually, let's go ahead and look at the Dow because we did just get those signals. I'll show you those really quickly here. And as you can see, there's that PMO sell signal. I suspect, as I said, that we might get whipsaw back above that uh, signal line today. I'm surprised we're not showing it just yet. It does get calculated uh, real time. So we're not seeing it turn up just yet. Uh, we'll have to see if the Dow can get that back uh, in motion. What I noted yesterday, not yesterday, I think Monday or Wednesday, a double top formation it executed with really one day, uh, dropped down to fulfill that very short term pattern. And now we're heading back up. And if you look in the thumbnail, uh, you know, we've got a rising bottoms trend line here. I would like to see the Dow get back above that resistance level and it's trying, it's trying very hard. And if we continue uh, to get the kind of movement we've started getting this morning uh, I, and into the afternoon, I suspect we will see that uh, move above that overhead resistance. The monthly chart for the Dow, rising trend channels. Like I said, I, I, had, I had been looking at some rising wedges, but really when I looked at these charts, to me, these looked more like rising trend channels uh, with a burst here on that on that parabolic rally that popped up above it, but then we immediately drop back down after that parabolic move and we're back into that uh, rising trend channel. You can see that uh, the Dow has a long-term PMO buy signal, but it, again, the PMO is in decline. And in the case of the Dow, we're not seeing any deceleration just yet. Let's go ahead and we'll move over to the OEX. I'll look at their monthly chart. 
All right, another rising trend channel. And again, the, the long-term PMO is topping. So this is telling us in the long-term uh, momentum has slowed. Again, not a surprise when we look at what's been happening since uh, early February, we would see that momentum slow and turn back down. But in the case of the OEX, as with the S&P, we do see the monthly PMO decelerating. So it does want to turn back up. And uh, in this case, you could see that you can see that, um, well, it's not because of those bottoms. It's not a true uh, symmetrical triangle here on the monthly chart. But I suspect if we look at the weekly, and there we go, there's that symmetrical triangle. Uh, I would go off of these two lows. And again, symmetrical triangles are continuation patterns. So we would expect an upside breakout. You can see on the OAX, the weekly PMO has decelerated. And actually, I think it's moving up just slightly by maybe a hundredth of a point. The NASDAQ has a much different look. And here's the weekly chart. You can see the weekly PMO is on a sell signal. And as you probably saw on those decision point scoreboards, the weekly PMOs are all on sell signals for the large cap indexes. But as you can see, as far as the NASDAQ is concerned, it's made the turn, it's on its way up. Uh, there's still quite a bit of margin to pop up through here right now, but I suspect we will see that. Um, you know, the, the NASDAQ has now, you know, moved up above those highs we saw earlier in the week, uh, whereas the Dow hasn't quite done that. And you can see that the NASDAQ is working very hard to uh, pop itself up and get back to those all time highs. The monthly chart for the NASDAQ 100 shows the PMO. Now remember, on the other three indexes, the S&P, the OEX, and the Dow, the PMO on the monthly chart was in decline. On the NASDAQ, you can see that strength where we have the PMO is not only turned up, it's risen above its previous top. So to me, I would be looking for more rally in that technology space. Uh, we, if you recall, uh, the NASDAQ was not performing as well as some of the other indexes, and now it's playing catch up. So I think technology is gonna be a place to be uh, in the intermediate to long terms. Let's go ahead and look at the S&P 400, and I'm just gonna look at these monthly charts because I want to give time to the big four. I always end up not getting uh, much time for those. I cut myself off. All right, so as you can see with the S&P 400 on our monthly chart, we have the PMOs turning up. And that's a, obviously a positive. And again, we're looking at a rising trend channel. So the only vulnerability, and I, I did write about this, uh, is that you know we've got these prices on these rising trend channels either in the middle of the channel or near the top of the channel. And so I feel like that leaves us vulnerable for a test of the bottom of that trend channel. And that of course would mean another sizable decline. And so I have that in the back of my mind, but we're seeing the momentum in these long-term charts starting to shift, decelerate, or actually turn up. And I think that is a positive, obviously. All right, let's look at the monthly chart for the S&P 600. And again, I wrote about all of these in last night's decision point blog. We also have the PMO on the rise here. It's beaten out its previous top. Uh, it's not overbought just yet. And as you can see, rising trend channel. So as far as the, the small caps go, we're still looking at a, a nice picture here. And in the Russell 2000 monthly chart, there you go, another rising trend channel and a PMO that is rising and is above its previous top. So where is the strength right now on the long-term and the monthly charts? The strength, small caps, mid caps, and technology. The other three obviously aren't doing too bad because we looked at those monthly charts. We're seeing some deceleration. The Dow is probably the weakest right now based on what we were just looking at. So all of those we need to keep in mind moving into the monthly picture. But as you can see, really, with all of these monthly charts, they're all in rising trends. And, you know, the PMOs are decelerating and they're starting to rise. And in some cases, move above previous tops, those PMOs. So I would tell you that the long-term picture still looks uh, very bright. The Dow needs to catch up and technology does seem to be leading the way 
right now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to spend some uh, time. Uh, actually, I want to go ahead and look at our indicators. I'm not going to wait till the end because they really have more to do with the indexes. And then I'm going to give you a really complete look at the big four because like I said, I know I, I tend to run out of time. So I want to uh, give plenty of time to that. I'm going to start with the intermediate term indicators and kind of work my way back since we're concentrating on the bigger picture, the longer term picture. So let's look at our intermediate term indicators, the ITBM and the ITVM. And what I look for here, obviously, as you can see, we look for divergences and I look for trends and where we're going. This, you know, I, I keep, kept telling everybody over the last two weeks, these indicators are very positive. Uh, we started to see them turning down and I said, I'm not gonna worry about it until we have negative crossovers. We've got negative crossovers. So now I, I'm having to rethink what's going on. But ultimately, and what I wrote about and what you can see is we're still in a rising trend. We are experiencing some consolidation. It should not be a surprise that midway through that consolidation that we're going to see a PMO top, that we're going to see intermediate term indicators topping. I think the good news is the fact that it is consolidation and it is giving these indicators an opportunity to pull back um, remove themselves from either uh, overbought territory or extremes, not in this case. So I'm, I'm happy that we are getting that pullback. I will start to now worry if we start moving in this consolidation pattern and we continue it and we continue to see these uh, indicators fall and break this rising uh, trend, then I might start getting a bit concerned. But right now, having looked at those monthly charts and some of those weekly charts, the picture is still bright. I think the picture is still bullish uh, in the longer and intermediate terms. How does the short term look? Looking at the Swenland trading oscillators, the STOB, which is the breadth uh, component and the volume one, it's uh, dependent on the calculations, obviously, one using volume, one using breadth. And what we can see is obviously during this period of consolidation, we saw these indicators top and they've pulled all the way back down into neutral territory. This is a good thing. Again, you wanna see these indicators start to decompress and not move too negative, you know, too negative, but you wanna see them decompress. And then that leaves you that opportunity for when the market picks back up to see that rise. And there's not uh, a concern at that point of getting to overbought extremes too quickly. So these indicators can accommodate you know, a lot of upside movement right now. Yes, they are in decline, but we twitched up Wednesday. We twitched down yesterday. I suspect we're going to twitch again today back to the upside. The main thing to keep in mind with the short term is that we're neutral. These indicators are in neutral territory. And while they are currently pointing down, uh, it's really twitching. They're very twitchy. Uh, and so I don't get you know, look at the overall trend here on them. We're still in neutral territory despite having moved down quite so far. Ultra short term indicators. Uh, these are the ones that are, you know, for a day or two. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. But yes, the VIX is rising. It's now in the middle of its Bollinger Band. What I noted um, today when I was looking at it was these um, pops, these climactic spikes from yesterday on breadth. And what I would be looking for out of that, um, given they're coming on also a lot of uh, new highs in the S&P coming in, uh, far less than the new lows, I would look at this as a buying or a selling exhaustion. And that, you know, we, we saw those negative readings yesterday afternoon suggested a selling exhaustion, meaning we should look for prices to move back up. And sure enough, uh, that's what we're seeing right now. So I like these indicators. They're pretty right on. All right, time for the dollar gold, oil, and bonds. And like I said, I'll spend a little more time on them since I have saved myself some time. So I'm going to move. In this case, we're going to start on daily and move to weekly and monthly. And if there's not much to say about them, I'll certainly move on. As far as the daily chart for the uh, dollar, this is UUP. Concerns, of course, are a very overbought PMO that has topped and is turning down. I, I see that the, the OBV uh, on this selling 
has really dropped back. Uh, if I drew a rising uh, bottoms trend line here, we will see, have seen that it broke down below that. Scooter hasn't been seeing too much deterioration though. You know, the dollar has been on such a streak and it needs time to, as we, like I said, unwind, decompress, consolidate, take a pause, take a breath. And so that's what I suspect we're going to see with the dollar. I don't, we could see it continue its rise, but what I would be looking for is uh, more consolidation, something here to get, get the PMO out of that uh, very overbought territory. The weekly picture on UUP uh, looks great. Of course, that descending uh, wedge, the falling wedge is a bullish pattern and we certainly executed that nicely. Look at the PMO buy signal. The PMO is not quite to positive territory but it is about to ride, you know, get there. So when you look at the chart for UUP, uh, it, it's telling us to expect more rally. Uh, and I would expect more rally. But as I said, I think uh, at this point, and even and when you look at it on the weekly chart, it's even more apparent. You know, this has been an almost straight up rally. And again, needs time to pause, take a breath. As far as the monthly picture, there you go. Uh, that wedge that we were looking at uh, on the weekly chart uh, also can be uh, pulled back even further here on the monthly chart. And there's the bar from last month of that rally uh, really just pushed right on through to execute that uh, falling wedge. And it burst right on uh, through the 9250 area of overhead resistance. So it had to pop through declining tops trend uh, resistance and uh, horizontal resistance, and it just had no problem. It just popped right through. You can see the PMO because of that has turned up now on the monthly chart, and it's turned up right above the zero line. So everything looks very positive, I think, for the dollar. I would be looking, like I said, based on some of the shorter time frames for a pause, uh, a time for the dollar to catch its breath. But overall, I think that the dollar is bullish and I would expect it to continue higher. As far as gold, now that we've looked at the dollar, I'm going to direct you to the bottom of this chart where I track the correlation between the dollar and gold. And the reverse correlation is always very, very close to one, a one-to-one -one relationship. So if the dollar goes down, gold will go up almost the same amount. That's why you have a reverse correlation of about negative one. But when we start seeing that correlation uh, move upward, gold is decoupling from what's happening with the dollar. And, you know, it makes sense. I mean, the dollar has been on such a rally and we can't expect gold to just completely fall, um, you know, fall to the surface. And it's fighting those headwinds of the higher dollar, but it's still managed to hold managing to hold its own. We have a PMO buy signal now that has occurred. And I've been watching that 1310 level very, very closely. Uh, you know, I have the overhead resistance line at more of 1305. Um, but this, I think the 1310 level uh, is a very important level. We popped up above it today, um, or I'm sorry, yesterday. And you know, we could see some more moves to the upside there, but I still think that 1310 level is probably going to hold. If this PMO buy signal uh, turns out to be true and good, uh, we should expect a rally. We should expect momentum to continue higher, but I wouldn't be looking for these highs back up here at 1360. Like I said, the headwinds for, uh, of, for gold against the dollar is going to be very difficult. I'm going to move us to the weekly. And as far as the weekly, I just wanted to point out this rising bottoms trend line that we have continuing. Uh, you know, we had this very long term declining tops trend line. And since breaking out, it hasn't honestly done that much. We've been moving mostly sideways. Of course, we're talking about a trading zone between 1250 and 1350. So it's pretty wide uh, zone there, uh, trading range. But it's still ultimately, when you're looking at the big picture here on the weekly chart, it's still just moving sideways. And I think that's even more clear on the monthly chart. So the monthly chart is, we see this ascending triangle. That is a bullish pattern. We should expect an upside breakout. But here are some problems. The PMO is trying to top. 
uh, it actually has topped and we have we saw some twitches and some deceleration on its move up, but we have not seen an actual top in the PMO and now we're getting that. And I say that this ascending triangle is aging. Uh, when I discuss chart patterns uh, on my video that I think they still are showing right now on Stock Charts TV, uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that uh, you need to have these things execute uh, before price gets too close to the end of the apex. Because let's let's think about this. You know, you want to see a breakout. All right. So yes, you could get that move above uh, here. And you, but what what can happen is if you continue into this apex nothing really happens, it's going to have to drift. It's going to drift up maybe, it'll drift down a little bit, but you're not going to get the execution of that uh, chart pattern. And the fact that this is aging, the fact that I'm seeing that topping PMO long term, I'd be, uh, I think uh, I'd be very suspect of what's going on with gold. Oil still rallying, but obviously we took uh, quite a dive here, but it was necessary. We needed it. And look at where support landed. Uh, this was oh, earlier in the week. Uh, it landed right here on that 1325 and it has moved back up. We have rising bottom support as well. And right now it is trading above that. Uh, the PMO is not looking good, but we needed it to decompress. Like I said, we're when we're looking at some of these, like the dollar, we need the PMO to back off so that we have that opportunity to take advantage of momentum later. As far as the monthly chart for oil, I've been looking at, um, you know, this great buy signal that came in oversold territory. Everything is continuing higher. Obviously, the $75 range is kind of the next area of overhead resistance as far as the long term chart is concerned. And, you know, given this strong PMO, it is not extraordinarily overbought at all. I wouldn't even call it overbought. Uh, I would be looking for prices to get up to that 75 level, maybe even higher. We're getting ready to go into the summer months. Uh, seasonally, and I, I think Tom would probably agree, seasonally, oils, uh, you know, gas and oil prices do go up during the summertime. Bonds. All right. It's been uh, a wacky time for TLT with the treasury yields kind of going crazy here. Uh, when we had treasury yields just taking that dive over the last week or two, uh, we saw, of course, bonds really enjoyed a great rally uh, because of that. But it hit overhead resistance, and now it is heading back down. Uh, we have a PMO that has a buy signal, and it was looking good. We came back above uh, the zero line. But look at the scooter, how it's falling despite this rally that we're seeing. And the, the OBV is falling backwards. Um, these are signs that there's some problems going on with TLT and bonds. And so I would be uh, considerate of that. Uh, we're already starting that pullback. I am looking for a move, um, at least when you look on the daily chart at 115.50. But when you go to that monthly chart, I see a head and shoulders pattern. And here are some major issues. So first of all, it executed. It's uh, really fighting to stay and get back above that neckline, but it has not been successful, even with that great rally that we've seen, that we've seen uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, and so the expectation, the height of this pattern, it's interesting. It brings us down pretty much to the this area of support down here where we're seeing those tops. Uh, from uh, 2003 and 2005, and I think you could even say uh, late and early, late 07 and 08. This is the support level and the minimum downside target for this uh, head and shoulders pattern. And, you know, if, if it's going to be good, it might find some support here on this long, long term rising bottoms trend line. Um, but I don't I don't subscribe to that. Look at what we've got going on with the monthly PMO. It is now below the zero line. And with that, let me wrap up uh, what we have covered today in summary. And I will have that uh, those summary charts for you in the Market Watchers Live blog recap. So we did that monthly chart review. Uh, the main things to 
takeaway are those three large cap indexes. We're still seeing PMO falling, uh, but they're decelerating. And with all of these, those long-term rising trend channels are, are very visible. Uh, mid caps, small caps, obviously doing very well. PMOs are rising on NASDAQ and those mid and small caps above their recent tops. As far as the uh, indicators go, or I'm sorry, the big four, uh, I've gotten here about the wedge. I'm looking at the dollar being positive, uh, new support at 92.50 for the dollar. And uh, we've got a long-term PMO and it's now getting above the zero line. Gold uh, is gonna have some problems with the headwinds with the dollar, but it is decoupling from the dollar somewhat. So it should be able to weather some of that storm. Um, but I'm lo looking at the monthly chart. I, I don't see, um, you know, we still have that rising, the, um, I'm sorry, that should be ascending triangle, uh, but it's aging and, you know, we need to see it execute. And finally, when I look at, let's see, oil and bonds, oil still looks healthy. I'm, I'm looking for it to get up to 75. Bonds are uh, really looking bad, that he long-term head and shoulders, minimum downside target 120. And the long-term PMO has dropped below zero for the first time since 2000. So despite the rally we've seen in bonds, I would expect more to the downside. And finally, as far as our indicators, uh, we had a selling exhaustion yesterday, which makes sense. Now we're getting a nice boom. Uh, Short-term indicators are neutral. So not telling us much. And the intermediate term indicators had those negative crossovers, but the rising trend is still moving upward. So I'm not uh, looking at them as that being too negative. I'm looking at it as more of a decompression. And that concludes the monthly chart review for Decision Point. Excellent job. Thank you so very much, Tom. It looks like things are definitely improving um, among many of the uh, uh, decision point indicators that you were looking at. I was really uh, impressed by the um, strength of the NASDAQ on that monthly PMO that you were showing. It yes. does show that the, that relative strength that NASDAQ's been enjoying for the past few months, it does make a difference on those long-term charts. Yep. And it's it's holding up. So that's why, I, and I think you were talking to technology, I think looks pretty good right now. Yes, it does. Uh, technology, I think, looks exceptional. And those key areas within the technology uh, sector that have performed so well during the bull market, semis, the uh, uh, internet stocks and software, all three right now, I think are lining up pretty bullishly. Yes, absolutely. So all I know right. it's time for that 10 and 10. And obviously, since I was talking for the last half hour, I did get most of the symbols in from earlier. I will start putting them in later, but I do have uh, your first one. I won't be able to show RRG or anything. So we'll just get to it. MVIS Microvision will be the first symbol for you. Yeah, it's a small stock, uh, only priced right now at a buck fifty-four, and it is down five and a half percent today. But I actually think this could present an opportunity for those who are interested in these smaller stocks that present uh, solid returns, but also present a little bit more risk. So if you're, um, you know, if you can tolerate that additional risk, I think that MVIS is at a pretty nice area here. I love the volume on the gap up. And yeah, it was a black candle. So I usually look for a reversal. We got that the next day. We came all the way back down, tested this gap. So we did fill the gap uh, and then went back up and broke out again. I think we've got clear resistance at 180. So that would be my target to the downside. I actually think this trend line and the 20 day moving average coming in at this level is a fairly significant area. Also noticed after the gap up, we we uh, held buck uh, 50 on the close on massive volume. So I think this 150 area up to 155 is an accumulation zone on MVIS with a target of 180 and a stop pretty close to that level. Um, it is, you know, it's probably a little volatile. I don't know how many market makers are in on MVIS. So uh, you might get an intraday move to the downside. You might have to be willing to absorb a little bit more risk. But I would not be surprised to see the stock turn either at this level or pretty close to this level with a short term target of 180. I'm not uh, hearing anything. All right. So what's the most popular uh, request in the chat room? Roku. R-O-K-U. It's tied with uh, Baba. So, but we just did Baba, guys. So I'm going to pass on that one. 
Yeah, I do own a Roku, uh, so I'll just fully disclose that. Um, I like it as long as it holds on to the rising 20. We got the PPO that's turned up, uh, the volume that came in recently here. We did get a breakout, but then we've come back down. We've lost the breakout level, but we still have that rising 20-day moving average. So I would keep a, a fairly close eye here on this rising 20-day moving average. I like to see it hold and turn back higher. I think at the end of last week, there were rumors going around that Netflix might buy uh, Roku. Of course, it was just rumors. That could have been what, what fueled this move to the upside. But technically, I don't want to lose that rising 20-day, so keep an eye there. All right. The next one, we haven't looked at this in a while, STX Steel. All right, STX. Yeah, I don't remember looking at this one for quite some time. Actually, it's the Seagate technology. Oh, okay. Um, but we are, uh, we, we gapped down on really heavy volume and came back up, went just above it, and then a big red candle after that to take us back below resistance. I don't know if it's changing the nature of its chart just yet. But I would say if we lose that open that we saw back in early May on this heavy volume, we, you know, opened at 52, traded down to probably looks like maybe around 49, then came back up and finished at 54. I wouldn't want to lose this candle body here. So I think 52 is a pretty key area of support. And then right here at uh, $60, we have uh, some serious resistance where we failed on the rally. So this is the trading range that I would be considering on Seagate right now. And it is toward the upper end of the range. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of shorting because I just don't, I think the market goes higher and it's harder to find candidates that move down in a rising market than it is to find rising stocks in a rising market. So I wouldn't short it, but I don't really like the way this thing is set up with that gap down on heavy volume failure at the resistance level. And now looks like starting to roll back over 56 has been holding over the last few weeks. If we move below 56, I think there's a pretty good chance we're going to go to 52. So I would avoid it for now. Okay. So the next one I have for you is um, BBY. Best Buy. Yes. Uh, I haven't walked into one of their stores in forever, but yeah. I, don't, I was keeping them afloat anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, support area off of the most recent high back in January, the reaction low was down around 66. We did go back up and take out that January high, so I do not want to lose this level right here uh, at 66. So let's get a support drawn in there. Uh, there was a huge move lower. This was earnings related. Uh, not all these companies are doing well or have, are responding uh, favorably to their earnings reports. This was one we saw that gap down. We're continuing to move lower. I actually, if I was going to take a shot at this one, it would be at $66 because I could keep my stop really tight on a closing basis below 66 to the upside, the recent high off of that gap down and the 20 day moving average, both are up, up at about $73. So I would be watching this level to the upside. I think you've got a current trading range from 66 to 73. All right. The next one I have, uh, kind of an interesting chart. We've got quite the breakout on uh, AAOI, Applied Optoelectronics. Yeah, this thing had been in a downtrend for a long, long time, but it looks like maybe it's put in a bottoming head and shoulder pattern. So I would be drawing a neckline right across here. You can see uh, the left shoulder, the neckline, go down to a lower low, which is the head. You come back up. This is the right side of the neckline. You come back down, or maybe this is the right side, depending, you know, maybe a slight uptrend. Uh, either one of these, though, could be the uh, pullback to put in the uh, reverse right shoulder and then the breakout. And what you want to see when you get a pattern like this, I think it's very important. If I don't have the volume confirmed, I ignore the pattern. But here you've got a great breakout with very heavy volume. So I think the bottom is in on this stock. Pullback and test of that rising 20-day moving average would be uh, the best entry in my view as we go forward. Okay. Next one is uh, Western Digital WDC. It's kind of a rounded top right now. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like uh, WDC. I don't think the chart looked very good, but also I think I mentioned June seasonality. This is one of the worst stocks uh, out there in terms of uh, their performance during the month of June. And I'm just not seeing anything technically here that I'm liking. I didn't like the increase in volume yesterday as it came back down below the the 20-day uh, uh, moving average. But more importantly, I just don't like this downtrend while the market's, you know, seems to be picking up some strength. 
Um, but the, here's a stock that has rolled over and is starting to move lower again. Uh, from a technical perspective, what I would want to see to start, you know, to look a little bit more bullishly at things, you can see the 89 level over here was key resistance. We broke above it, kind of held it here uh, in a flag formation and then broke down on heavy volume below 89. We came back up. We failed at 89, looked to be rolling over. Unless Western Digital can, can clear $89 and get some big volume bars coming in on that move, I would stay away from it. I don't like the chart. All right. I got a biotech for you next. Arena Pharmaceuticals, A-R-N-A. -A. Nice breakout. Yeah, I really like this space. I talked recently about the biotechs and um, healthcare providers. I think I was just talking about that yesterday, the day before. And uh, so this is a, a really nice breakout here on the stock. Uh, with beautiful move up and notice the rising 20 day. We closed just below it here, but I could even make an argument that on that move lower, we were kind of testing this price support. So this was the highest candle body at about $44. We came down right about to that support level along with the 20 day and now turning back up volume, even though it looks like it's a little light. I think this is kind of an unusual volume. This is going to be a pretty decent volume day based uh, on the way it's traded so far. Already 560,000 shares, just a little bit past the halfway point of the day. Looks like maybe we're going to get a million shares, which would be a fairly strong day. I think looking back over the past couple of months, the question for me is, can we hold it into the close today? I think this is a great looking uh, stock. I think that biotechs tend to perform really well in the summer months. So there's a lot I like here, but let's see if we get the confirmed close and uh, confirmed breakout into the close. All righty. The next one we have is IWC. Uh, it's a micro cap ETF. So I thought that would be interesting to look at. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, it's definitely a risk on market. We've seen this with small caps. We've seen it with the NASDAQ. We've seen it in the various areas, the various sectors with technology on the verge of breaking out and so forth. Um, consumer discretionary doing well. So the IWC is just another example, I think, of uh, a risk on attitude in the market, which is bullish. And one of the reasons why I you know, felt like the market was going to continue to go up, even though we had a pretty rough patch to open 2018. For now, I would be looking at the support level at the 20-day moving average. We got close to it on the last pullback. I think if we pull back again somewhere near that 20-day moving average, that is uh, probably the best reward to risk entry. You got great support around 101 and a half. Okay. Uh, number nine for our Canadian friends, the Bank of Nova Scotia, BNS.to. Certainly took a hit with the treasury yields, but it looks like it might be finding some support. Yeah, the bank index actually held support. And that's what, you know, I guess Bank of Nova Scotia is trying to do the same thing here. That earlier low back in February has been holding on the bank index. And on this particular stock, it's also holding. Uh, the, the group has not performed as well as I would have expected with the 10-year treasury yield moving up earlier this year. Um, but it hasn't broken down as the 10-year treasury yield pulled back. So I think we're in kind of a wide trading range here on the Bank of Nova Scotia. I'd look for support around 75 and a half, resistance at 82. So as we move lower and get closer to this area, I think your reward to risk looks good for a long entry. Excellent. And our final one, uh, Starbucks. Not, I mean, it's been consolidating here for, for the month. What do you think? Is it going to break out? Uh, I think eventually it'll break out. Why don't we uh, do this one with the weekly chart, look a little longer term. And I think it's pretty clear. I'm going to go back even further because I think uh, you lose sight of the longer term uptrend here on Starbucks. Uh, seven year chart, you can see we had a huge move. I think we've just got this long period of consolidation, which I believe will eventually break to the upside. But it's been a very frustrating ride if you've been in uh, Starbucks for a while between about 50 and 63, 64. We've had a huge move up in the market. Uh, 2016 through 2017, we had almost an uninterrupted advance to the upside in a bull market, and yet Starbucks didn't participate. So uh, for now, I think it's just range bound. I don't see any reason to go jumping into it. I really would like it as it gets, you know, maybe more toward the low 50s or wait until we get that breakout. But for now, it's in the middle of a trading range. It could go either way. It hasn't really participated in the bull market. So I hate to say it because I love Starbucks, but I would avoid it right now. 
All right, sounds good. That is our 10 and 10. Somebody asked, uh, are you, do you prefer tech right now over the biotechs or about the same? Uh, I like both areas, so it just comes down to an individual stock um, selection kind of a thing. But yeah, I'd be looking in both. I love what the internet's doing. Uh, I think semiconductors are strengthening. Software has looked great for a long time. Uh, one of the areas leading the market to the upside. So all of those areas look good. Biotechs are trying to make a breakout. If we can get the breakout, the thing that's, that's great about biotechs is that when they make a breakout, they can run really fast. And you just sit there waiting to pull the trigger, watching them go up day after day. It's really <laughs> rough. So well, let's see if they get the breakout, though. And I'd be looking at that DJ USBT to see if we can clear the recent highs. There you go. Yeah, I, at this point, I, I prefer tech over bio, but that's mainly because of the kind of trading I do. I just don't, the volatility in the biotechs, I kind of shy away from. But technology right now, and like I said, looking at those monthly charts, I think that's the place to be. Well, if you get the breakout, if you do get the breakout on the biotechs, I would pay attention because we're moving into June. June and July are great months for the biotech group. So if you get a technical breakout to boot, I think that would be a great sign. Excellent. Well, we'll keep an eye on it on the show for sure. So here are the symbols we just covered in the 10 and 10. I will have those up in the Market Watchers Live chart list. Just go to the blogs tab, click on the Market Watchers Live blog, and the link to these charts is right at the top of that blog. ChartCon is coming up in August. Did you know that, Tom? I had not heard it. <laughs> when, what, what are the dates? Well, yesterday we had to give them our final titles, so we're getting very close here. August 10th and August 11th. And of course, the uh, we're looking at reducing risk in uncharted waters. And I think it's a great theme. We have some amazing speakers, and you can get to the the speakers, you can learn about it. We even have a video, uh, the agenda right here. You can see uh, great discussions and all of them have to do with reducing risk. You guys always ask us about stops and entries and uh, position sizing. We have people doing all of these types of uh, presentations for you. So I recommend you check this out. You don't have to come to ChartCon. You don't have to come to Seattle. It's actually an online conference. So it's really uh, set up for all of you who want to go online. Uh, and so you'll be able to keep the recordings. We'll have some social networking going on while we're at the conference to make you feel a part of it. Uh, we did this two years ago. And it was a huge success, and it was just so great to be able to reach out and talk to so many people uh, during that conference. So recommend you go to register. Obviously, click on the big green button. The price right now is $249, which I think is an absolute bargain because, as I said, I think you will save that money on at least one or two trades that you'll make based on the principles you're going to learn at this conference. So really, uh, this is a a drop in the bucket when you consider your investments and decision making. So recommend you go and check ChartCon 2018 out. We can't wait. I know I can't wait. I cannot wait either. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do our final market update. And then we'll get into those chart breakouts. And I'm going to show you the best way to do this. First of all, let's go ahead and look at our predefined alerts for today. And as you can see, we've, we're having some issues with the industrials, but I suspect if we go back to that ETF, we're, we're going to see it's not as uh, negative as it might appear. I'll just click on this right here. So you've got the, um, we had that MACD uh, crossover, but when I look at my PMO, we're still just fine. It's turning uh, up. Uh, it, it shouldn't be having too much of a problem here. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we can see that the NASDAQ crossed above 7,500. And uh, Tom, you mentioned that at the top of the show. And as we've been saying, tech's looking very good. Uh, energy sec sector, the BPI is crossed below 80. But again, I think this sector still uh, is looking pretty positive right now. Let's see, that's the BPI. Let me get to the actual index. Let's look at XLE. All right. So as you can see, uh, we sh we've got some short turn overhead resistance to pop back through. The PMO is declining, 
But ultimately, we're not looking at that much deterioration, I would say, right now on uh, the energy sector. Looking at that PMO relative strength is still very, very strong. The other alerts we have going on here today is the Russell 2000 crossing above 1650. As we know, the Russell 2000 is in the process of making new all-time highs. So let's go ahead and take a look at that candle glance. And here we go. I'm going to add the TSX in here for our friends out there in Canada. And I'm going to throw on TLT as my final one to look at. All right, so here we go. NASDAQ, uh, most all of the uh, major indexes had nice gap ups. Look at the Dow uh, continuing higher. Same with the S&P 500, looking like a great day uh, lining up here. NASDAQ continuing to push to, toward intraday highs as well. And Russell 2000 right on its way back up. Uh, it's now getting ready to push against, I think it might even be about ready to hit some new all-time highs. We can see that uh, the Canadian markets are pretty much unchanged right now. Treasury yields are higher on the day. We've seen such a depressed move on those yields, and now we're getting that upside breakout, currently 2.89%. And UUP, nice spike here earlier in the morning, but has come back down. It's still up uh, three cents, 24.79. For UUP commodities are lower, but making a bit of a move back up, trying to uh, challenge what we were seeing earlier. Uh, USO is near its intraday lows, uh, but it seems to have found that support level just below 1340. Currently reading 1343. Gold is lower on the day. Uh, it gapped down on the open, but it made its way back toward uh, unchanged territory, heading back down now about halfway through uh, the losses that we saw earlier. Currently reading 122.72. VIX is lower on the day, hovering right around 13.5. TLT, big gap down, but starting to move back up uh, just a bit. And that pretty much concludes our final market update. Uh, the markets are looking pretty good, Tom. And I imagine there are quite a few chart breakouts that are on on your list there are a ton of chart breakouts and we're going to jump right in and take a look at that uh just one second uh one thing i want to focus on today as uh, we get into this is i want to show you um some of the charts i went through all 100 of the nasdaq 100 charts because we are seeing a lot of strength on that index so uh, again i wanted to look underneath to kind of see you know, is it being led by just a handful of stocks or are there a number of stocks in the NASDAQ 100 that are leading? And I think based on uh, what I'm about to show you, uh, you'll find that there is a uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, stocks that are worth uh, following here on the NASDAQ 100. First, let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 itself. This is a weekly chart going back the last three years. And I don't think there's any question we've been in an uptrend. Yes, we had some volatility. Yes, in the near term, it was very scary. But as we have discussed throughout the last few months, money really didn't rotate in bearish fashion. Money continued to rotate. Many cases, uh, we saw relative strength moving higher in some of the key um, aggressive sectors like technology and like consumer discretionary. So we saw a little bit more weakness in financials and industrials. Uh, but again, with the 10-year Treasury yield moving higher throughout 2017 and pulling back in the first quarter, I think that was uh, fairly easy to explain. Uh, but what I want to do is now, knowing that we've got this NASDAQ 100 on a roll here, and over the last eight or nine weeks, you can see that it's been a pretty steady move up. We were down around 6,300 at the low, maybe just above that level eight or nine weeks ago. And today, we're almost at 7,100 on the NASDAQ 100. Now, we were talking about 7,500 earlier. Just keep in mind, that's the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ 100 separate index. Uh, but we are up more than 10% in the last nine weeks. And that's a pretty significant move to the upside. So let's take a look at some of the stocks that are actually making breakouts. So I'm going to go through a couple of uh, different lists here. The first, where we actually see breakouts. And then the second, hopefully I'll get through all of these as quickly as possible and, and show you some that are on the verge of breakouts because catching a breakout can be uh, pretty rewarding. 
But let's start with what those that have already made breakouts. Adobe talked about the software space. Adobe is one of the better stocks in this space. Uh, broke out above this double or triple top that we had uh, that had uh, set in back in March and April. You can see the move higher in the second week of May. Since then, we have been holding the rising 20 day as the PPO continues to rise. Adobe, a little bit overbought, as you can see on the RSI, but that's the only thing wrong with this stock. A pullback to that rising 20 day moving average, I think, would be very bullish. Uh, ADP. Now, this one is breaking out, but I have to admit I'm a little bit nervous. And that's because when you see the breakout that occurred in early May, check out the volume. And then as we keep moving up, the volume kept dwindling and dwindling, and the PPO has rolled over. And here we are breaking out again. The volume's not too bad today. I'd like, I'd like to see it pick up even more because it's probably going to be under 2 million shares. And that's where we've been here over the past two or three weeks. Light volume, negative divergence breakouts make me nervous. So not all breakouts are the same. This one, I'm a little skeptical, especially if we get a reversing candle, bearish engulfing candle, something like that probably would suggest get the heck out. So ADP, eh, it's, a, it's breaking out, but it's one that I would be really careful with. Amazon, this is one that I would not be careful with. I really like Amazon. Big gap up with earnings, huge move up, pulled back. We held on to support around 1550, and now today we're making a breakout. Volume isn't off the charts, but it's not light either. Uh, looks like we're probably going to head for about 3.5 million shares today, which has been kind of the where we've been the past uh, week, week and a half during this uptrend. I think that's been fine. It's not massive volume, but it's also not among the weaker volume days either. So Amazon, I think, still looks pretty good here. Um, CSX. Talked about the railroads earlier. I'm very bullish the railroads, and CSX has been a leader. Check out the rising uh, PPO and the pullbacks holding the rising 20-day moving average. I think the action here has been very good. Uh, whoop. Wrong symbol, EQ, I'm not, a, not aware of that one. Let's try EA. Electronic Arts, making the breakout today. This could be in on the verge of breakouts, but uh, I'm making it a breakout. Looks like it's making the breakout. Problem I have here on this one is the volume. Be careful if it, it's already taken out the highs on an intraday basis. I'd be careful if it pulls back this afternoon. We could get one more pullback, but currently it is in breakout mode. Facebook, I didn't think I'd be saying this, stock was breaking out two months ago uh, after the Cambridge analy analytics fiasco, uh, the huge move down, massive volume. This is probably the last stock in the S or excuse me, in the NASDAQ 100 that I would be talking about breakouts uh, in uh, early June, but it is moving to the upside as it gets up. This is one I am a little concerned with volume and we are at a major level. Currently we are in breakout mode on a closing basis. I don't know if we're going to hold it into the close, though. This is kind of like electronic arts. Be careful if we get a reversal here. We do have a slight negative divergence as well. Illumina. This is in the biotech space, and this has been one of the best performing biotechs. Huge breakout earlier in May, back at the 255 level. We continue to move higher. Uh, this is one that it does have a negative divergence. So as it moves up, be aware if we get a heavy volume reversing candle. It might be time to lock in some profits. I think it goes higher in time. I just think with a negative divergence and a possible reversing candle at some point, that maybe that would uh, thwart the move in the near term. Uh, any kind of a move back, though, to test that price breakout at 255, I think would be very great, a very good entry into uh, Illumina. Intel, INTC. Intel making a breakout here above $56. Volume here is pretty decent. It looks like it's going to be among uh, the heavier volume days of the past month or so, and it is making another uh, key breakout. This, of course, one of the leaders in that chip sector that I talked about earlier that I think is strengthening. So Intel at this point looks very strong. Intuit. Uh, Intuit breaking out. PPO still slightly negative but improving. But look at the volume here. This is one that I would ignore the negative divergence because to me, it looks like PPO is starting to pick back up again. Uh, that means uh, that the momentum is accelerating to the upside in terms of price, and we've got the volume confirming it. So into it, I think, looks great, other than the fact it's just overbought. ISRG mentioned this one recently. This, this stock loves the month of June, and look at how it's starting today. Uh, big volume yesterday. Uh, volume not as heavy today, but still pretty solid. 
clearing this double top at 470. And I like the fact that it's been riding above the 20 day moving average. This one looks like it's just beginning to gain strength, a confirmed breakout here. And I think we're probably off to the races on intuitive surgical. I would keep a, a stop going forward though, beneath that 20 day moving average. Microsoft. Well, we've talked about software. This is one of the giants. Big move up, looks a lot like Adobe, just continuing to power forward. PPO looks good, not a whole lot bad to say about Microsoft. Netflix, specialty retailer, uh, huge breakout above the 340 area. You can see the volume pick up to confirm that move, and today it's breaking to another high. Netflix continues to be very strong and almost a must own in uh, most portfolios. Sirius, uh, you know, we haven't talked about Sirius XM here uh, lately, but May was a really good month for Sirius. We opened the month at 630. Uh, we were up 10% during the month. And uh, so we definitely got the breakout above the prior highs. And volume on the breakout here did expand. So there's not a whole lot going on here that I don't like. Perhaps the negative divergence here. We've got these lower PPO, higher prices. I would maybe watch price uh, support around $7. As long as that continues to hold. If you want to give a little bit more room, you can use the 20 day at 687. If it closes below the 20 day, I would expect to see a 50 day test based on that PPO. But I do like Siri. I think it goes higher in time. Uh, Trip, TRIP, this is a great looking stock. Huge gap up with very strong earnings that came in about three or four weeks ago. Uh, pulled back a little bit, but we didn't even get to the top of gap support. And look at all these hollow candles. If you're not a, a candlestick fan, a hollow candle means you're closing above the open. So anytime you're rising, continuing to close above the open every single day, it is a sign. It, it, to me, it's just reeking of accumulation. And look at the volume picking up as we continue to move higher. Trip is overbought, but it's a great stock. Pullbacks to that rising 20-day moving average, in my opinion, would be great entry points. TXN, Texas Instruments, this is the last one of the breakouts I wanted to show here. Um, this one hasn't reached the January high. But after gapping down on heavy volume back in January, look at these reaction highs struggling at 112. Looks like we're getting that, uh, getting through that 112 level. I'd like to see a little bit of volume, but maybe the volume could be lacking because we haven't cleared the January high. I suspect with this move today, though, we're heading for that 118, 119 level to test the January high. Now I'm going to give you a few stocks in the NASDAQ 100 on the verge of a breakout. Stocks to keep an eye on. Apple. Of course, we always want to keep an eye on Apple. It actually is doing better than it was when I put this list together. It is in breakout territory now. I'd like to see the volume pick up this afternoon because we do have a negative divergence in play. But this was a huge move up back in early May on very solid volume. We are in a flag. A breakout above, say, 190 on the close today would be bullish. I'd like, again, to see the uh, volume pick up into the close today. ADI. This is uh, analog devices. And this one, too, actually is doing a lot better than it was when I was looking at it earlier. It was right up here on the verge of the breakout above that January high, but it is now at the high of the day and is in breakout mode with a strengthening PPO. ADI looks good. And this is another one in that chip space worth keeping an eye on. Cintas, C-T-A-S. Uh, this one is on the verge. Nice breakout here. A little bit of volume coming in uh, as we made the breakout or approach the breakout level. Sideways consolidation. Love holding this 20-day moving average. Let's get a little bit more volume in, but it definitely is on the verge of a uh, significant breakout above the recent highs. Uh, FOXA, which is 21st Century Fox. Look at that false breakout there, but we really haven't pulled back much. I think this one is just uh, gathering a little bit of steam. A close above $39 is your breakout. I think it's probably coming to a theater near you. Last two, IDXX. I mentioned this one top of the show. Uh, we are trying to get this breakout today. This is another one. I'd like to see a little bit more volume coming in, but it is one of the better performers in the S&P 500 today, and it is trying to make this breakout 216, 217, a key area of resistance on IDXX. Let's see if we can get that breakout. And the last one, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, NVDA, approaching the high. Looks like off of an uptrend, we got a nice cup. I do want to just reiterate the warning I gave yesterday when I went through my seasonality report. For whatever reason, NVIDIA does not like the months of June and July. I'm going to show you quickly the seasonality on it and just show you over the last 20 years, both June and July have averaged going down 4.9%. Uh, 
And look, they're only 40, they only rise 42% of the time. So that means they only go down 58% of the time. So it doesn't mean they're going to go down every year. So if NVIDIA breaks out, I would pay attention to the technicals. But if you get a false breakout, and let's say NVIDIA trades up intraday one day to 263 or 264, and then comes back down and closes below, leaving that tail up above this resistance level, it might be time to ring the register and let NVIDIA show you that it can make that breakout on the close. Okay, that is it for wow. the chart breakouts. I'm going to go ahead and bring up a summary slide and let you take a look at the charts I went over. That was excellent. I, I think I was writing down a few of those that are nearing breakouts. Honestly, they look good. <laughs> Apple looks really good right now. Yeah, and I think 21, uh, I think I went over 21 stocks pretty quickly. I think I'm trying to set a record for how many stocks I can get in a period of time. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I did find a number of my thought were very interesting. And it just goes to show you, it's not just, you know, three or four stocks that are leading the market to the upside and leading the NASDAQ. There are plenty of others, by the way that I looked at that were bullish. They just weren't either breaking out or nearing a breakout level, or they were breaking out, but they weren't breaking out to like a four month high. They were breaking out of a, a downtrend or whatever. And so there were a lot of stocks that I thought looked pretty good. Well, we need to, to decide what we think the market is gonna close out next week. If it's gonna close higher, lower, or mostly unchanged, I will be turning in our votes to the Wall Street sentiment survey. So let's see what we've got. Oh, there's our poll. Uh, currently, the majority of you are saying higher. Uh, some are lower, but uh, I have to say, looking at how things are, are shaping up on my charts, you know, I really, I'm tempted to go mostly unchanged just because those short-term indicators are kind of sitting in that neutral zone. But I like what's going on with the PMOs. Uh, I'm gonna say higher next week. Oh, well, I am definitely going higher because I think one of the things that could really fuel the market is uh, the 10 year treasury yield, which has pulled back quite a bit from that 310, 311 area. And if that continues rising, that means money's coming out of bonds. And if that's the case with the strong jobs report we just had this morning, I think we're going to see money rotate into equities. Uh, bigger thing I'm watching is whether the dollar can make the breakout above a recent high, because I think that that area around 95 on the dollar index is huge. And if we get the breakout there, I think small caps, even though they've already been off to the races, I think they could continue. This could be a marathon for the small caps. I definitely agree with you. It's going to be a very interesting coming week. Well, I hope you have a great weekend, though. We do have a pretty exciting week uh, left for us. Uh, there's your week weekly schedule. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to next week, but I'm, of course, always looking forward to my weekends. And I, I hope you have a good one. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I always look forward to my weekends as well. And Friday is, of course, uh, my favorite day of the week because the weekend's coming. And we do have a Chart Watchers article out tomorrow. I just want to yeah. let everybody know. So uh, if you're not a Chart Watchers subscriber, it's free. Check it out. You can go to the blogs page, look on the right hand side and uh, sign up for that. Make sure you get the latest from all of the technical uh, gurus on Chart Watchers. I so better write it. <laughs> have a great weekend. Um, and I want to thank everybody for being with us today. And of course, every day, uh, we wouldn't have this show if it weren't for you, all of you guys. Uh, please remember to complete the survey as you exit. We do love to get your feedback. Uh, as a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great Friday afternoon, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. See you back here on Monday and go Caps! Volatility is back and interest rates are rising. With the markets headed into uncharted waters, ChartCon 2018 is here just in time. See how the experts are protecting themselves and watch live from the comfort of your home or office as they reveal the risk management strategies they use to stay profitable in any market. Plus, you'll get complete video recordings to watch on demand for years to come. Join us at ChartCon 2018, streaming live August 10th and 11th.